Good, thank you for the introduction. Um, you know, I was speaking at this conference 12 years ago. I was talking to Justin backstage, and one of the issues that came, came up then was big tech companies, what, what was the opportunity for them to use addressable to get into the TV industry? That was something people were starting to talk about 12 years ago. So Ford Wines to today, I'm gonna to give you a sprint, 10 minutes, going through what's the role of big tech in connected TV. So it will come as absolutely no surprise to anyone in the room that three big tech companies dominate ad expenditure globally. So those are Alphabet, um, Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta. They take about three quarters of ad spend globally. And if you add in Microsoft, Twitter, TikTok, and the others, that gets you to about 80% of global ad spend. But what about connected TV? Um, we've looked at the UK market as an example. We try to break down ad spend by bucket. It's clear that the market is dominated by broadcast of VOD, by YouTube, and then there are smaller amounts of spend on other VOD, by which we mean fast, SVOD, independent apps, some spend on that dynamic ad replacement, and a small amount of spend on device UI, otherwise known as um, native home screen ads. But who's providing this advertising? We had a stab at estimating which providers is this ad spend going to in the UK? And these are very rough numbers, but we estimate about 28% of that getting on for a billion connected TV ad spend in the UK is going to major tech firms. But those are primarily Alphabet through YouTube. The other stuff is relatively small. And this is UK. Globally, these numbers will vary a bit. We think the percentage is much higher in the US. But still, the message is relatively clear. At the moment, big tech is taking a relatively small share of connected TV advertising compared to digital generally. So what does the future hold? Well, the first question is, you know, which companies are we actually talking about? So there's kind of two buckets. Um, you can see here, these are the main tech companies, the size of those circles at the top is proportional to their revenues. And you know, there's two buckets. The first are the traditional big tech firms. So we're talking about Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, and Microsoft. We've not included Meta because it's less active in this market. And then there's a new batch of big tech companies operating here, the device manufacturers. So we've got Samsung, LG. Um, there is a longer tail of smaller manufacturers and Sony, and we've also included Roku because it's got a successful platform model. And then for comparison, there's Comcast. It's also a large company, and it has main, many of the same assets and capabilities of the big tech firms. So what are these companies like? Well, no surprises, they are huge in terms of revenue, hundreds of millions in revenue. They have huge cash flows to invest, large R&D teams, and to differing degrees, they are pointed at advertising. So those shaded circles underneath are the size of our advertising businesses. And clearly Alphabet and Amazon are more developed than the rest. Um, but they're all starting to look at this error. And why? Well, if you look at Samsung and LG, for example, advertising gives them the opportunity of incremental revenue streams at very high margin, even though compared to the rest of their business, it's relatively small. So what have they done in Connected TV so far? We try to map out their assets and capabilities across the Connected TV value chain. In brief, what's distinctive about these companies is that they control what we call gateway platforms. So they've got an operating system. They've got a device with a user interface. They have an app store. So they control the way in to smart TVs and connected TV. To differing degrees and in different ways, they also own media and sales houses. And also, in different ways, they have ad tech. And that's the area where the provision is a bit more patchy. So what we're not saying is at the moment, all of these business have highly vertically integrated, very orchestrated um, businesses, but they have many of the building blocks in place to start growing their 
um, connects TV ad revenues more aggressively. And if you look at this, you know, what we've seen recently is you know, where there are gaps, people are starting to fill those in. So Microsoft's Xander acquisition has filled a gap. There are some questions around what Apple is doing in this area. So how do you build a business from these blocks? What, what's the business model? There is no one common solution or answer, but what we're seeing used by some companies is what we call a gateway platform plus model. So that's starting with the gateway that they control, and then that spins off some first-party data, so ACR data and additional data. Many of these companies have rich sources of data outside Connect TV that they can bring in, so Amazon Shopper data, um, Google Intense data, for example. Control of a platform also enables these companies to generate ad inventory. So there's home screen advertising being generated on those platforms. Plus, it provides a prominent shop window for their owned and operated fast services and SVOD, where that has advertising. And where these platforms have scale, they're able to use that leverage to get a share of third-party streamer ad revenue. So this platform develops those kind of two pillars of their business. And additionally, in some cases, they're able to use those assets to support their own ad tech businesses, whether that's to sell their own ad inventory or to intermediate in the sale of third party ad inventory. So this is all great in theory. Um, how is it actually working out? So there's very little data available, but two examples here, two US focused examples, um, Vizio and Roku, and they kind of argues that they're developing from their platform businesses. So this includes advertising and more subscription and pay parts of the business. Is around, in Visio's case, the latest quarter, um, $27, Roku 44. And a large part of that is advertising. We don't have the exact split. We've, we've had a stab at guessing it, but a large part is advertising. And we think, you know, to put this in perspective, that, that is about, um, that compares to about 530 household spend on advertising in the US. And Vizio's revenue here is about 17% of its device revenue. So it's got this new revenue stream, highly profitable, incremental to device. But this is driven by scale. These platforms have enormous numbers of installed base homes in the US in more fragmented markets around the world. And there's a lot of platform fragmentation in other markets. RPUs are lower, and these businesses are less well-developed. So what's this mean for streamers and content owners? Um, one of the big challenges is they have to distribute on these platforms. But on what terms? And what we hear from clients a kind of complaints that in addition to the programmatic tech tax, they're facing a distribution tax with these platforms. We see it a bit differently. We see it as more of an opportunity to collaborate and partner with these platforms to ensure that their services are prominent, that they have access to certain data. And, and the kind of things that are being traded in these deals, um, essentially the platforms are providing access to audience um, prominence or promotion on the platform in return for, and there's various things on the table. Um, it could be a share of ad inventory. It could be a commitment to spend on device UI ads. It could be partnerships around fast services. So there's this kind of evolution of multifaceted services. But the people we see getting the better deals, and we hear anecdotally that deals vary widely it's the larger streamers and broadcasters who are able to negotiate the best deals here. And that, that really kind of raises some questions around where we're going in the future. And to leave you with four kind of mini predictions here, you know, given the economics of scale here, there's a strong incentive for more consolidation of gateway platforms. Now, that might not be M&A. There might be a small bit of M&A, but it could also be alliances and partnerships. There's a strong incentive for more investment in fast services, 
content from these platforms. We also think there'll probably be more collaboration between streamers and broadcasters and these platforms to develop innovative services. But as I said, I think the pressure's on for overall a kind of higher take rate by the platforms, whether that be share of ad inventory or through other means to justify their investments in their platforms. But hopefully that will become a dynamic which increases the pie as opposed to be a kind of zero sum game. So in 10 minutes, that's um, kind of where we got to with the role of tech platforms. Um, John, do we have time for a question? That's an incredibly difficult question. Um, I mean, I think, you know, if you look across the piece there, at the moment, Apple is moving less quickly, but Amazon, Google, and Meta are all moving very fast, and it's difficult to pick between them as, as the U is offering the best opportunity. But, you know, when it comes down to the scale of stuff you can actually buy now, I mean, Amazon has some strong assets, Google does as well, so, I mean, you know, that kind of answers your question. But, you know, this can all change very quickly. Okay. And in 10 seconds, can the connected TV total revenue in this market feed everybody happily? Can, you know, can everybody thrive in this, or is this going to have to consolidate at some point? I think consolidation is inevitable. But, you know, I mean, it, there will be additional cuts taken out by additional people. There will be unhappy people after that. That's happened. I mean, it's sort of inevitable, isn't it? Right, thank you. Good, thank you. Okay, thanks very much.